Hi, thanks so much for joining me for an introduction to Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Um, Dalton studied gas laws, and uh, this law is attributed to him. Now, what he says is when you have a mixture of gases, okay, a mixture of gases uh, that don't react chemically, Okay, so this is, we don't want to get into chemical reactions. These would be inert or non-reactive gases, such as the air. The total pressure is equal to the sum. For example, our total pressure or our barometric pressure of our air is going to be the pressure exerted by the nitrogen plus the pressure exerted by the oxygen plus the pressure exerted by the water vapor plus the pressure exerted by the carbon dioxide, plus so on. There's some trace gases and so forth uh, that are present. It's equal to this simple sum. Now this is going to always be true if we are dealing with a few uh, criterion here or um, constraints. One, we have to have a constant volume. So if you take individual gases and then mix them into a container that's a different size, you have to do a combined gas law calculation. Same thing with temperature. So once we mix the gases, the temperature has to be the same and constant. And we are assuming an ideal gas. And so ideal gases are those that behave according kinetic molecular theory of gases. In particular, the premise of kinetic molecular theory of gases that says there are no attractive or repulsive forces. So there are no forces of attraction between nitrogen and oxygen that will change their individual pressures. Okay, so it's equal to the simple sum. Now, these are fairly easy calculations at an introductory level. The key is we, they all have to be the same units. You can't have one pressure in atmosphere, one pressure in torrin, another in kilopascals. They all have to have the same units. So let's take a look at a calculation and how we would do these. I'm going to do my guess method again. Again, it's a little longer, but it's very helpful. So I have a container that has oxygen. So I'm going to have a pressure due to oxygen. I'm going to have a pressure due to xenon. And I'm going to have a pressure due to helium. Now it tells me the total pressure. So I have a P total is equal to 972 tor. Okay, so if the pressure of the helium, so it gives me my helium is 348 tor, and my pressure of my oxygen is 74.1 kilopascals, what is my pressure of my xenon in tor? So that's listing my givens. Now I need to check my units, and lo and behold, I can't have one in kilopascals and the other in tor. The question specifically says I have to answer in tor, so I'm going to convert that 74.1 kilopascals. I want to get rid of kilopascals, and I want tor, and the way I have my students memorize is, is the equivalence of everything to one atmosphere. And so in terms of atmospheres, I have for kilopascals, I have 101.33. You might see 0.32. That won't affect your answer. 101.33. Uh, the equivalent to one atmosphere in Tor is 760. So that's how I get my conversion factor and I get 556 tor. Kilopascals cancel, I'm left with tor. Now I can write my equation. My P total is the sum of the individuals, the oxygen plus the xenon plus the helium. This is Dalton's law. You know, these people are, I'm not much of a history buff, but these people are important and made important contributions to our understanding of science. So now I'm going to substitute. So we wrote our equation, we're going to substitute, and we're going to solve. 
So I have 974. I'm not going to worry about units right now because I've already um, taken care of that. 556 plus my pressure of xenon plus my helium. Remember, you need to do what your teacher says to do. So if your teacher or professor wants you to show your units in your math, you need to do that. My pressure of xenon is equal to 68 torr. I do take off points if you forget your units. Okay. Now, a word about significant figures. This was an addition subtraction. So we find our furthest uncertain to the left. That furthest uncertain to, it, to the left is the ones place. This is the ones place. This furthest uncertain to the left. So I'm looking at my uncertain digit, and I have to find the one furthest to the left, and that's what I need to round to. All of those were to the ones place, so this number is rounded to the ones place. Wow, thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time.